I was looking on Facebook the other day and an advert for an exercise class caught my attention. The picture showed somebody in a very impressive position, but it was the slogan that caught my eye. It said, beneficial stretches for the inflexible. I showed it to Graham, suggesting that this is what we might need. And we both wondered how many years of stretching it would take to be in the position that the person advertising the class managed to achieve. But it's those words that have been going round in my head ever since I saw them. Beneficial stretches for the inflexible. Until the pandemic struck, I was taking regular ballet classes as well as other exercise classes each week. And although there was still room for improvement, I was amazed at how much flexibility I had gained over the months and years. In the ballet class, our teacher Debs would come round to each one of us and even though we all thought that we had stretched our legs out as far as we could, she would take our legs and pull them up a few more inches in a way that was both a little bit painful but also quite satisfying at the same time. With assistance and support from Debs, quite literally as she hoisted our legs up behind us, we were all able to manage quite a passable arabesque. It made you realise that even though you think you have reached your limit, there is always a little bit further that you can go if you push yourself or if you let someone help you to go further than you think you can go on your own. Apart from being amazed at the flexibility I did manage to achieve, I was also surprised and quite disappointed at how quickly you lose it if you're not using it. If you're not stretching yourself or using your body then stiffness soon sets in. Then it seems even harder to move away from where you are and even the motivation to move seems to diminish. It takes more effort to make yourself try and do something, anything, just to prevent stagnation. This doesn't just apply to exercise and physical aspects of life. I'm sure there are areas in life in which we could all do with trying some beneficial stretches for the inflexible. Do you find yourself always reading the same kind of thing or watching the same kind of thing or eating the same kind of thing or thinking the same kind of thing? We may all be quite happy and comfortable with that, with the choices that we've made, but we don't know what we're missing by not trying anything a little bit beyond our usual range. I know a lovely 91 year old woman who every year decides on something new that she's going to learn and I think she's amazing. I've already got a long list of my own of things that I want to learn, so I hope I'm as open-minded and as flexible as June is if I make it to that kind of age. I've heard people often describe faith as a muscle, the point being that you need to exercise it to keep it healthy and to help it to grow. If you're not exercising your faith, then stiffness soon sets in and eventually the muscle can waste away altogether. I've been reminded of something that Rob Bell wrote in the first chapter of his book, Velvet Elvis. If you're looking for another re recommendation for me, from me this week, then this is it. He talks about the experience of jumping on a trampoline and the freedom and joy and exhilaration that it brings. He then goes on to draw a comparison with faith. He describes the springs that support the trampoline as things that help us to make sense of our faith and of the deeper realities that drive the way we live our lives every day. He says though, the springs aren't God, the springs aren't Jesus. The springs are statements and beliefs about our faith that help give words to the depth that we are experiencing in our jumping. I would call these the doctrines of the Christian faith. They aren't the point. They help us understand the point but they are a means and not an end. We take them seriously and at the same time we keep them in proper perspective. As an example, he talks about the doctrine of the Trinity. The word Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible by Jesus or any of the other writers, but over time it has become central to how followers of Jesus understand who God is. He describes it as a spring. It was added later. And we can take it out and examine it and probe it and question it. It flexes and it stretches and this is what makes it so effective. Rob Bell says it is firmly attached to the frame and to the mat yet it has room to move and it has brought a fuller, deeper, richer understanding to the mysterious being who is God. 
Robert Bell then goes on to talk about bricks rather than springs. For some people, faith isn't like a trampoline, but it's like a brick wall. Each individual brick is firmly stacked up on the others, and if you pull out one, then the whole structure begins to collapse. A brick wall is fixed and a brick cannot flex or change because if it does, then it doesn't fit into the wall anymore. What happens then is that the wall becomes the sum total of the beliefs and God becomes as big as the wall. But God is bigger than any wall. God is bigger than any religion. God is bigger than any worldview. God is bigger than the Christian faith. I've always been drawn to this analogy partly because when we did trampolining at school, it was one of the very few PE lessons that I did actually enjoy. But also my own experience has led me to discover that the brick wall of faith is so much less satisfactory than the trampoline of faith. When I left school, I went to Bible college for a year where I felt as though we were encouraged to see the things that we believed as bricks. If you questioned any of the bricks, you were treated with suspicion. The expectation was, that you all towed the same line. I think my wall was always a bit shaky, but it all began to fall apart a couple of years later when my dad died. The people I knew who had the brick wall kind of faith were quick to offer comfort by telling me that it was all part of God's plan. But this just didn't add up for me. How could I possibly trust a God in whose grand plan it was essential that my dad had to die? Bricks began to tumble down around me and I stepped away from all the rubble. I still believed in God and I still believed that somehow God loved me, but I was very angry and I couldn't trust God and I certainly didn't want to be in the church or near any of the Christians who believed the kind of rubbish that I'd heard in my darkest hours. It took years of questioning and arguing with God, with myself and with others, before I finally discovered a faith that made sense and that I felt I could embrace. This faith definitely had springs. I wasn't prepared to accept anything without question anymore. I wasn't prepared to simply follow along blindly, believing what other people told me I had to believe. I needed to ask the questions and find the holes in the arguments and push hard on things to discover for myself what was really important and what didn't matter so much. I discovered the joy of trampolining the excitement and adventure of jumping with Jesus and never really knowing whether I'm going to land on my feet or on my bum. I've come to realise that the important thing is to let go, to embrace the unpredictability of the trampoline, confident that Jesus is with me and actually that Jesus is helping me and even pushing me to test those springs to their very limits. I don't believe that Jesus is like a brick wall and I don't believe that Jesus wants us to be stuck behind a wall of our own building, whether that's a wall of the rigidities that we believe or the walls of our buildings. I believe that Jesus is inviting us to exercise our faith muscles and get on the trampoline with him. It's a push, I know. No doubt there will be times when we're out of breath and a bit wobbly but there will also be times when we'll experience the freedom of being in open air, feeling the wind of the spirit rushing around us and in us, giving us the momentum and the excitement to jump again and again and again. Beneficial stretches for the inflexible are an invitation to gradually, slowly get away from our stiffness and rigidity and discover just what we can do with a little more suppleness. It doesn't all happen at once, but when you start trying, you really do notice a difference right away. If you're a brick wall person, I want to encourage you to give the trampoline a try, to ask some questions and explore some answers that might not be the ones that you've always been told are so. And if you're a trampoline person, I want to encourage you to keep on jumping. The greatest thrill of my life is to be on God's trampoline feeling the butterflies in my tummy at the thought of the possibilities that lie ahead. As time goes by, I feel that I'm jumping with more confidence because I know that God is there to catch me. And who knows, maybe one day I'll even be ready to try out a few somersaults.